Uh, yes, hello, and welcome to our uh, next installment in our series of uh, programs in how to play card game solitaire. You know, we've received many uh, requests uh, for a certain game, and, and this latest inquiry really caught my attention. It says, hey, card guy, is there a solitaire version of um, my favorite trick-winning 24-card four-player game, dot, dot, dot? Well, I can uh, confirm with an affirmative. So let us learn the interesting rules of um, one of my favorite games, Euchre, and how you can play it solitaire. Let's begin. Okay, well let's begin with a review of our rather unique deck for the game of Euchre. Now again, it's only 24 cards versus 52. It's still two colors. Uh, it's still four suits, but what makes it unique is it's a limited number of ranks, only six ranks in the pack, and that's nine through eight. We'll learn more about that in a minute. Go ahead and take those 24 cards, get them shuffled. We, of course, recommend shuffling them seven times to achieve that mathematically proven maximum randomness. Okay, I think we're all shuffled and ready to go, so let's dive into the unique rules of the game of Euchre. Now the first concept that we're going to discuss is the trick. What is a trick and how do you win them? Now remember, this is a four-player game and it's made up of teams of two who sit opposite one another. During the course of play, a card is played. Now in this case, it's the Ten of Spades. If you have that suit in your hand, if you can match that suit, you must play it. So play continues with the Queen and then the next player plays the King, again matching that suit. The final player plays the Ace of Spades, and because the Ace is the highest rank, the player with the Ace wins that trick. So go ahead and grab those cards. That is one trick for the player at the bottom. Now one interesting wrinkle in the game of Euchre is establishing the Trump suit. Before tricks are played, a suit is selected to be the highest ranking suit. In this case, let's pretend that it's diamonds. So if a player were to play the Queen of Spades like we saw before, and the next player has that suit in hand, must play a spade, the king is played, and then continues around the table, the ace of spades is played. If the final player in this case cannot match the spade, you are then allowed to play the trump suit. And in this case, it's a ten of diamonds. And what's interesting about this game is that now the ten of diamonds wins the trick, despite it being the lowest rank. The trump suit beats all other suits. Okay, well let's spend a little time reviewing the rather unique Euchre deck. Now again, you only use 24 cards of the 52 in a standard pack. So let's have a look. You use all four suits, only nines through ace, as you see here. This is going to make up our 24 card pack for the game. Now of course, during the game, you are going to set your trump suit. For this exercise, let's pretend that the clubs have been selected as the trump suit. And here's what's interesting in the game of Euchre. When that happens, the jack of clubs takes the lead in that suit. So imagine the jack jumping ahead of the ace and outranking it. This card is referred to as the right bower. Here's another wrinkle for you. The color matching jack, in this case the jack of spades, joins that suit and becomes the left bower. This is the second ranking card in the game. And these two cards together are referred to as the bowers and are the highest ranking cards in the game. Please pay close attention to the bowers. They are important. They also change every round with a selection of a different trump suit, so you need to keep your wits about you, okay? Well now let's talk a little bit about scoring. During the course of the game, when you win tricks, you earn points, and I always thought this was kind of clever. Take a couple of those fives, these are discarded fives, you're not using them uh, for the game, but you will use those pips as a graphic depiction of your score. And if you win the most tricks in a round, you get a point, and after 10 points, you win the game. So here's one, and then there's two, three pips makes three, and four and five. Then you go ahead and flip that card over, and you can start to depict six, and then seven, eight, nine, and 10. Just a cool way to keep track of scores. So now that we've seen how the game works, what do you say we run through a sample round to get a feel for how the game really works with four players and with teamwork? 
Now here's an example hand that's been dealt. We have four hands of five cards each. The last four cards are called the kitty. The top card is then revealed and then it is considered by the group for Trump. Now again, this is a game of partnership where there are teams who sit opposite one another and they hopefully can operate in concert to win tricks and ultimately win the game. Let's go ahead and flip those cards over so you can see everyone's cards and get a feel for the decision making. So if the nine of spades is being considered as a Trump suit, let's look around here. Does anyone have any suits, uh, any spades that would make this a compelling suit for their team? For this demonstration, the dealer accepts the nine of spades and then discards a lousy card, in this case, the nine of hearts, and then spade has been determined to be the trump suit for this round. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if this ever happens to you, where the card that is revealed for you to select is a bower, a left or a right bower, a word of caution that has been handed down through the ages, if you pass on a bower, you will lose for an hour. Okay, so just be wise about your choice making. So let's return to our sample round here. So let's pretend that the first player on the left plays a jack of diamonds. Now the next player, if they can match that suit, they must play it. So in this case, the player decides to beat that rank and play the king of diamonds. The king is beating the jack. The next player does not have any diamonds. So that player is allowed to play a trump card if they wish. In this case, they're playing the dreaded left bower and is winning this trick. But the dealer also has no diamonds and in this case can play the superior right bower, the top ranking card in this round, and win the trick. You understand? And then we play four more rounds and whoever wins the most tricks claims the point for that round. A lot of fun. Now we need to cover a rather sensitive topic. Now, as you know, uh, this is a game of partnership and teamwork. And sometimes you have a hand that is very strong, or you have a hand that could potentially be strong if only you knew the cards in your partner's hand, which you cannot see. There are subtle ways of communicating illegally with your teammate that is absolutely forbidden. And those attempts to communicate are referred to as table talk. I have compiled four scenarios of some tricky communications that folks could use to communicate illegally with their teammates. Let's have a look so that you can be in tune with the sinister table talk. Okay, so player one has a strong hand with a lot of diamonds. This player could do well, but does his teammate have diamonds as well to support winning all the tricks? Well, one way to find out is by using a phrase like this. Hey, you guys see the baseball game last night? <laughs> Boy, he sure can uh, run the diamonds. What a feeble attempt. And as, uh, as dealer, you should immediately call for a redeal. Let's look at another scenario. Okay, so player two has a very strong hand with hearts and may want his teammate to be aware of his position. He could try an attempt such as this. <coughs> Sorry, dudes. Just a little heartburn. Clever, but uh, uh, not clever enough. Uh, that sort of table talk warrants a redeal. Okay, so player three has a very strong uh, hand of clubs and might do well, but how could he communicate his position to his teammate, player one? Well, he could try something like this. Hey, after this, you guys want to hit the clubs? <laughs> yeah, no clubs on uh, my watch, wise guy. Redeal. Okay, now let's pay attention to the trickiest of them all, player four. Player four has been dealt a very nice hand of spades and could do very well and may wish to communicate that position to his teammate, player two. How would he do such a thing? How could he let his teammate know he's got a handful of spades? Well, he might try something like this. Oh, shoot, I gotta go find my roommate, make sure he's paid the rent. Uh, did you just ask if he spayed the rent? <laughs> Yeah, sorry, money bags. No table talk. Redeal. Folks, I can't emphasize enough just how competitive and tricky Euchre players can be. You must remain vigilant. Okay, well, what do you say we pull it all together and convert what we've learned into a game of Euchre Solitaire? Okay, well, we'll start off with our 24-card deck made up of only nines through aces, and we will deal ourselves five cards. And this will be a game of one player 
versus the dealer. Now, let's reveal those cards so we can kind of track our thinking. We'll reveal the very top card, and the first thing you can decide is whether you accept the spades or whether you reject the spades as your trump suit. Now, in this case, I'm not feeling it, so I'm going to reject that spade. Now, sometimes the dealer can overrule you, and here's how it works. If the next card matches the color, black to black, the dealer accepts that spade despite your choice, so you have to play it. So spades is the trump suit. So I'll start off with playing a king. Uh, I'll be able to beat that 10, and I will win the first trick. Now I get to play the next card. In this case, I'm going to start off low with a 10 of diamonds. What happens next is the dealer continues to deal over and over until a diamond or a trump card is revealed. In this case, the ace of diamonds is revealed. That outranks my 10, dealer wins. Next card is a king of diamonds. Now, if I have a matching suit, I must play, and I can't win with the jack, so I'll throw him the nine. The dealer now wins the second trick. Ooh, here comes this card. Now remember, the jack of clubs is the left bower. I must play a trump suit. I really get beat on that trick. And, oh, and now here is the right bower to put me um, out of my misery. So the dealer took four tricks. I only took one. Okay, well, let's shuffle and let's try it again. So let's deal ourselves five cards. Let's reveal so you can see. Reveal the top card is the queen of clubs. Do I accept? or do I reject the clubs? Now, I, in this case, don't have many clubs, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to reject it again. But let's do the color match and see if the dealer agrees. The dealer agrees. The dealer does not want the clubs either. So we can continue now, and I get to play the very first card. And I get to set the trump, and I'm going to choose diamonds. I've got a lot of diamonds here. So I'll start off strong with the right bower, the top ranking card in this match. The dealer pulled a king of diamonds that matched the trump. I win by rank and I get to play again. I'll play the ace of clubs and then the dealer will continue to draw cards until they can match that club or trump me with the diamond. Let's keep drawing, let's keep drawing. Oh, there's the left bower. Now the left bower uh, certainly outranks my ace of clubs, so the dealer wins the second trick of two. Let's get rid of these discards, and now the dealer plays first. Now if I have a heart, I must match, so I have to play the king, but it does outrank the nine, and I win the next trick. I'll play a ten of diamonds. Here comes a nine of diamonds. I win by rank again. I'll play the queen of diamonds, and then the dealer will draw. Ooh, and the ace of diamonds actually beats mine. So at the end of the day, the dealer took two, I took three, and I kind of won that round. And then, of course, you can redeal and play the dealer as many times as you like. You know, this is a real fun way to get your head in the zone for Euchre and get into a strategic mindset for winning tricks. Uh, admittedly, it does not compare to the complexity uh, and the intrigue of the four-player game, so I recommend you play this solitaire game, uh, but I also recommend you leverage what you learn and, and play it for real with the team. It's just a blast. So thank you so much for uh, requesting this tutorial. It was a real pleasure to give. Hope you enjoyed it and be, oh, be sure to join us again next time.